what I'm asking is green presidential electors to file in each of their states. This will be class, it, it will be class action suit. All of us against change. <laughs> to enjoin change in his capacity as president of the Senate from, we know he's a presumptuous kind of guy. Uh -huh. <laughs> but from being presumptuous enough to only unilaterally accept the uh, presidential electors from a state mm -hmm. that has no winner-take-all statute and only accept those who won where they represent this uh, candidate that won the majority of the vote. There are 33 states, ladies and gentlemen, in which there is no winner-take-all statute. That is, there is no state law that at somewhere in the election law of that state declares that the candidate that wins a plurality of votes in these states, in this state, is awarded all of the presidential electors that the state is entitled to. And the number of presidential electors every state is entitled to is the number that they have represented in Congress and the Senate. They just do it on tradition. There's a total of 203. You know, it's 270 is needed to elect, right? 203 presidential electors vote on a winner-take-all basis in states where there is no winner-take-all stature or law. because I think it's very pleasurizing you making stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> Most of what I pleasurize is from history. All right. Uh, I have considered the bill entitled, quote, an act supplementary to an act entitled act to provide for the more efficient government of the rebel states. Passed on March 2nd, 1867. It is universal Negro suffrage. The questions which the federal government leaves exclusive to the states. You know all that argument that it's the states who determine with the election law. The people who passed the 14th Amendment rejected that. So that's all a lie. And say, and say for themselves, all this legislative machinery of martial law, military coercion, and political nation by the South, the military attack, which to impose upon themselves the fearful and untransparent vote. What did that say? Complete Negro enfranchisement and white disfranchisement. Mm -hmm. They passed the bill over his veto. They surveyed because they had to do it in a neutral fashion because they do surveys in order to inform the government of what they have to do in order to pass legislation. In the survey, and they were cast by us. They highlighted the civil action that I filed over all the suits filed by the NAACP, the ACLU, and any other organization you can name. And the, and the reason was is because I was the only one to raise the malapposing claim. Now, I'm setting you up there because I'm going to be asking you to do something similar in, the next election, in, in this upcoming election. How many of you are green presidential electors? Right. You have it in your power to revolutionize the electoral process, and I want to tell you how. Now, here's how the formula worked in the second session, and you'll see how eminent fair it was in the second session. It says, look, you southern state, you can't count all of the uh, members of your population in order to determine. That's what you do, how many representatives you can have, all right? And then only allow a subset of that population to vote for those representatives. You can only have representatives that is actually based on the number of those citizens that exercise the franchise in your state. So they don't have to say race, right? So what does that mean? If you count, like in this room, all the blacks and all the whites, 
in order to say we will have in, in a ratio a certain number of delegates to the Green Convention. You cannot then allow <laughs> only the white segment in this room to vote for those delegates. That means that they say, okay, if you want to do that, then you can only have a number of delegates predicated on the white population, not the white and the black population. It's in the Constitution. Now that is how, that, that just simple, it's in the Constitution. Never been enforced. Well that, so what in essence that's saying is, now let's apply it to modern days. It's not just a, a group of black, you know, uh, based on race that you turn on, what the discriminatory class is, just the discriminatory class is, but other groups. What we are arguing is, any group that is not counted. You count them in for the basis to determine how many representatives you can have in electoral college. But when it comes time to count in the vote, you don't count them. Then you can only have representatives predicated on that population you voted for. That's the game you're going to be playing. And it's called, uh, here is the two articles. Amendment. Now, it's not the first section. Most of us are familiar with the first section of the 14th Amendment. Actually, the second section by when the people were uh, adopted, who formulated the 14th Amendment, they actually had the second section was to be the only part of it. But they didn't uh, anticipate the southern uh, form of Confederate States response. And this is what it says. It said, now this is the correction over, you remember the first article had to do with representatives and taxes predicated on population. Here is there, and, uh, but it was based on the whole number of free whites and, and only a fraction of the blacks. It said, nothing shall be a portion among the several states according to their respective numbers, counting the whole number of persons in each state, excluding any, I'm sorry, the Indians are still left in zero. Mm -hmm. So they are not all way progressive. <laughs> it said, but when the right to vote at any election for the choice of electors for president and vice president of the United States is denied to any of the key thing. Citizens of the United States are in any way afraid the face of representation then shall be reduced. In proportion with the number of such male citizens shall bear to the whole number of citizens 21 age of the state. Now there's a United States code to implement. This is the enabling code. The enabling code, if you look and Google it, you will find uh, Title II, United States Code, Section 6. We, the title is Reduction of Representation. Should any state deny or bridge the right of any of the male inhabitants thereof be in 21 years age and send the United States to vote at any election named in the amendment of the Constitution, Article 14, Section 2, a sample of participation in crime. I mean, if you are a rebel and you rebel against them, you ain't going to be able to vote. <laughs> All right? The number of representatives opposing to such things shall be reduced and the proportion which the number of such male citizens shall have to the whole number of citizens state. Now, this is what my student against go was. My goal is say, it has been established that Paula has discriminated and denied the right to his black. So you, in your capacity as a uh, uh, presiding over the count of the electoral college in the Senate, you know, on January 6th. You were enjoined from counting the full slate of Florida electors. Florida is only entitled to those electors not subject to the reduction predicated on the disfranchisement of this black population. And if that had been enforced, then of course go over the one. If Florida was entitled to 25 electors. Uh, the black population would count for some more, like 10 electors. Okay, I can get it. None for you, exactly. All the black ones? No. No, no, no. If you look at the thing, this is what's so amazing about the abolition business. It's not in proportion to the people that you disfranchise. If you have identified a class that you have disfranchised, you have entered that class. So it's based on the black population. Right. <laughs> that's what's radical about this. And that's why they call them what? Radical Republicans. <laughs> that's why they call them radical. It was it was real radical democracy. It's in the Constitution. I was the first to try to enforce it. 
Now, I was before a conservative opponent of the judge named Kennedy. I was using this to educate a slow education process that we have this right. And I got carried away with myself for a moment there. And, 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 and Kennedy was saying, this is, he knocked out, he told the clerk, knock off all the rest of the cases. This is interesting history, and I don't want to hear this. I, he gave me all day. And I was pro se, not attorney. Let me understand that. Because he went ahead and he cleared his document. And he said, but he, he said, well, it was on the dock. It was, I think the county was to take place on Monday. I was there uh, filing my injunction on Wednesday, on, on that Friday. And so he said that. I said, Your Honor, he said, well, you know, you're not injured. You're not, you know, from Florida or Washington. I said, well, Your, Your Honor, I say, the diminishment of a, any man's right <laughs> is the diminishment of all of us' right. <laughs> you say, you say, that's good for the market, but that's not the way it works in the court. <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said, well, I know the court ain't about the market. So I'm not trying to insult the court, Your Honor. <laughs> but I said, the thing is, you say, Your Honor, the problem is, I, who elected my presidential electorate, that meet constitutional muster. His rights are diminished if he has to compete with another state that elects his, you know, his presidential electorate that does not meet constitutional muster. He said, yeah, but that's not correct enough. He said, look, I don't want to rule on the merits of this because I want, this is something that is important and should come up again. And then I st I, it, it hit me with a strong argument where he said, yeah, because the, the government is trying to say, well, how is he is elected any different from any other presidential elected in the state? And then I started out, you know, and well, the first thing he said, well, the problem is you don't have real interest. I said, well, Your Honor, I can get someone from the All right? Mm -hmm. And he looked at the right. He almost fell for the trap. <laughs> See, Frank, now, no, no, nobody's going to hear about this crap. And the media's making the show. See, the way the media controls here, if, if, if it doesn't say anything about it, it does not exist in our society. That's the reality. And so what happened was, he turned to his clerk and he said, uh, he said, um, what's on the document? We can listen to He said, we would have to stop the county on the 26th, right? He said, uh, so the clerk, and the clerk said, Your Honor, uh, we're going to be elected to press. <laughs> that the county is going to be. And he looked at me and said, almost dead. So, <laughs> so if the county had been holding for anything, then there's no way they could have known what God was doing that. So he said, I'm going to rule that you don't have standing. And then I said, and, 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 but, uh, so I won't rule on the merits of this case. And then I started to make the argument, I'm going to make in the next argument, but I didn't make that. I said, Your Honor, I am unique as a presidential elector in this one. Other presidential electors in other states can appeal to their senator, you remember that, in order to challenge the county that takes place. I don't have a senator. Good one. My only, my only appeal is to the court. So you have that, and he, and he said, do you really want to make this argument tonight? Mm -hmm. I said, oh. No, Because no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, then I would have been, I didn't want to stand. Because then he went ahead and go to the merits. And then all of that rationalization and line that they deal with put it on me. All right, now. However, all of us president, as presidential electors, you're going to have stand. As presidential electors. I'm going to be asking you, as green presidential, to file a class action suit to enforce the second session of the 14th Amendment. I'm going to put, you can go to the website, www.nike.us. I'm going to have a template suit. All of your, you can, all you got to do is fill your, where I have, admit, I will list green presidential electors from the District of Columbia. You just list green presidential electors from your state. And we want to do this, and I'm going to name the states that I want to start off with. But the one thing on it, the same states I'm going to start off with, and then get down and then we need to go to the next stage. You can do it. Don't be afraid. Don't be worried about attorneys. Because attorneys don't want to touch this because they know both parties are going to get on the internet. 
Well, we look at it because this is spreading the duopoly uh, system. So I, I don't care if you got liberal, liberal lawyers in some, a lot of them are now because they're embarrassed for the fact that they have let this go on for so long. There's another advantage for pro se. When they do dumb stuff, you can call them on their dumb stuff and not be called before the American Bar Association for embarrassing another lawyer. That's the way to keep you, to get what they're all in check. You can go crazy in there. <laughs> See? They can. What I'm asking is green presidential electors to file in each of their states. This will be class, it will be class action suit. All of us against Cheney. <laughs> to enjoin Cheney in his capacity as president of the Senate. From, we know he's a presumptuous kind of guy. Uh -huh. <laughs> but from being presumptuous enough to only unilaterally accept the uh, presidential electors from a state that has no winner take all statute and only accept those who won where they represent this uh, candidate that won the majority vote. There are 33 states, ladies and gentlemen in which there is no winner take all statute. That is, there is no state law that at somewhere in the election law of that state declares that the candidate that wins a plurality of votes in these states, in this state, is awarded all of the presidential electors that the state is entitled to. And the number of presidential electors every state is entitled to is the number that they have represented in Congress and the Senate. They just do it on tradition. Yeah, but they can tell you what you want to vote. No. They, they, they have laws, some laws say they can plant, really, any elected can vote under kind of any way they want to vote. Right. Constitution. Right. But the way we play a game is, is that, an art, that you can't miss all of the electors on a ballot. Actually, I want you to understand that the president is a figurehead in your state. For presidential election, they your figurehead. Like if McKinley is our president, whoever our presidential candidate is, is a figurehead for you. Right. Then the people are actually voting for you. They don't know they're voting for you. They they vote for you through your presidential candidate. And so what they're voting for is each state, say Georgia has 15 presidential electors. There are 15 presidents elected that the party select, their presidents elected that they <coughs> pledge to the Democratic candidate. There are 15 Georgians presidents elected that pledge to the Republican candidate. There are 15 that pledge to the Green Party, 15 to the Communist Party, 15 to the Liberal Party. So the 15 that are pledged that will get selected under winner take all is the candidate that wins the popular vote, which means that all of those pledged candidates are selected. Now what we're saying, there is a state where there is no one to take all statute. That means that one candidate may have gotten 40% of the vote, you know, the other 60% of the vote. Under that statute, by what right does Cheney presume to only accept the 60%? I mean, the, all of the presidential electors, and not only 60% of the electors to the candidate that got 60% of the vote, and this uh, regard those electors that are players that got 40% of the vote because 40% of the people voted for them. All right, now what we will be doing is in those states to enforce. In some states, it's, it, you gotta have be tough. You gotta have a tough arguments. In some states, you're gonna be helping the Republican Party. In other states, you're going to be helping the Democrats party. But in all the states, you're going to be helping us. <laughs> all right? Now, that's the secret. Don't let that one out. All right? But, but the thing is, for instance, uh, here, now I'm going to go to the, to the states that are affected by this process. It's called unbounded states. <clears throat> these are uh, blue states. Uh, 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 these red are uh, red and blue states that are unbound. The number of unbound electors, that is electors that under state law are not pledged to any uh, 
under state law that they must vote for the presidential candidate that won the popular vote. These are the states. There's a total of 203. You know, it's 270 is needed to elect, right? 203 presidential electors vote on a winner-take-all basis in states where there is no winner-take-all statute or law. That preclude them. Now, let me tell you what I say about this. In the 2000, when they had the 2004 hearings, and I encourage you to go to John Conyers' report on the 2004 hearings of election, I think it was the election irregularities in Ohio. He put out a report on that, and it established the fact that they stole the vote back too. As a matter of fact, two officials are now serving time in federal prison for having manipulated the recount in Ohio. Of course, they, they neither doesn't care about that anymore. But, it, it convicted. Now, here is, here is the thing. In Ohio, uh, like I say, it, it, that's, that Ohio is not one of those states. But these are the states that have a, a, a war on a winner-take-all basis, but there is no winner-take-all statute. Does Maine have a congressional thing? Uh, Maine, there are two states in the United States that do not have winner-take-all, but have what they call the district system. That is the candidate, the two of the uh, electors awarded, like the base of the Senate, that's based on the Senate, on a winner-take-all basis. But the other electors, it can be a division elected who won the majority in that particular district. And let me make it clear to you, the district system sounds a little more democratic because the Democrats have some district, the Republicans have some district win. But when I look, when you total it all out, it is less democratic than winner take all. Because of the summer, that, <laughs> I can show you the number. It looked all right for Maine and the Red, but when you apply it across it, it's less democratic. I call that serial winner take all. <laughs> it's a serial killer. <laughs> winner take all is a killer. Well, district system is serial killer, a serial electoral killer. All right? Now, what you want, the fast, the closest you can get to a fair representation that's close as possible to one man, one vote, without amending the Constitution, is proportional apportionment of the presidential electors predicated on the popular split in the electoral college. That's as close as we can get. Now, it's not going to ever be perfect. Proportional apportionment of the presidential electors predicated on the popular split. All right? Now, that's what we're going to be arguing for. All right? That's what we're going to be insisting on in these states. So, so you're saying like in California, if two percent of the vote votes green, you yeah. have one elector. Okay. All right. Now I'm gonna tell you, California actually had a, a greens one enough that if they had proportional apportionment of presidential electors, I think we would have gotten one out of California, one out of New York, or maybe two. I'm not sure. All right. But now, here are the states. Here's where we're gonna focus. If you are green presidential electors, and you are presidential elector in any one of these states. On July the 28th of this year, I'm going to, I want you to look, I'm going to be filing a civil class action suit challenging that in these states, they are compelled to oppose their presidential electorate predicated on popular split. Like I say, these are states, in any one of these states, you know, Democrats or Republicans get 30 or 40 percent of the, of the vote. So if you're from New York, you have to be a part. Here, there's two of us here from Iowa. Why don't you talk about Iowa? All right, let's talk about Iowa. Hey, there's at least three from New York. New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. I'm let's just teasing. Let's that out. That's because that's one of the states that they're going to steal black votes in. Because it's close. Uh, because it's close. Uh, now, in Iowa, uh, there's seven green presidential electors. There's no winner take all statute. What you're going to be suing. And say, Albert, now actually, there's several suits you can file if you want, depending on what your resources are and how, if you can find some lawyers that are serious. One is against the governor of the state, because the governor forwards, the, you know, the, what they call the certificates of ascertainment to the national archives. So you can sue your governor and say, you do not have the right 
to only forward to the National Archives. The National Archives, by the way, is responsible for overseeing the electoral process. So you may say you, pros eight, uh, versus uh, under the second section of the 14th Amendment, to enjoin the governor's state, to ensure that he forwards all of the presidential electors in the percentage of vote. And that's all he can do. He can't do anything else but give a percentage of the vote for each of the uh, parties. All right? And your solution is, if he fails to do that, then he's going to be, then we, our is going to have to lose a proportion of his seven electors in proportion to whatever the population of, you know. That, that the minority party makes it a state. Now, in that state, you will be helping, what? Republicans. Yeah. Okay, but uh, you understand that? Yeah. Okay. What, what we're looking at is democratizing over all of these. All right? You will notice that there are more red states that are at risk to proportional voting than Democrats. So if you do it across all the states, it's going to even out. But here's the secret. I'm going to give you what the secret is. And so here are the states. So New York, New York. I'm going to be asking you to file this in action. You're going to be helping again. You're helping Republicans. All right? You understand that? What's the difference? <laughs> Your, your ancestors died for the second section of the 14th Amendment. That was their proud achievement, that you have proportional opposing with president's electors predicated on the popular vote. That's what your ancestors <coughs> died for. All right? All right. Now, it will help. The one thing is, they can't say it's a buy suit that we're following. We're trying to help one party. No, we are trying to help all disfranchised electors. This is a class action to empower all presidential electors, regardless of what party you belong to, to exercise your right. Now the reason we're going to do this is because, now let me show you the next table here. Oh, by the way, this is voting for unbounded electors in the Confederate states. If you are a green presidential elector in any one of these states, I want you to file the silver action. Now, I stand, the first one, the easy one is against uh, Cheney, the vice president, from joining him, from counting over. But you can file the suit against the governor, and you can also file the suit against the archivist, because the archivist uh, uh, conveys what they call the certificates of vote to the Senate for the county. And so the suit could be against the archivist, say, you have no authority you have no statute that gives you the right to only forward to the Senate, only the votes of those who won, uh, that were pledged to the candidate won the popular vote in the state or there is no winner take all statute. And so then when it gets to Cheney, you sue him to say, who are you to make the choice that the archivist couldn't make and the governor couldn't make? So the, actually, the, the, most, the, the thing to do is to sue all three if we had those resources. But let's start off with Cheney to see if we get some noise. We're trying to see if we can get some attention on it. Now, here is a post and postman of the presidential electors predicated on the proper split. Here is uh, the former, these states, Arkansas, Georgia, Louisiana, Tennessee, and Texas, are states that have, uh, do not have one to take all statutes. That would have made the difference of both 2000 less than 2004. So if Greens can enforce this, now, see, the thing you'll be saying in the southern states that'll give you stronger standing than others, see, they, they play this game that you, in discrimination, you have to raise the issue of race. You just can't raise that you've been treated differently. Now, I put aside the fact that Gore didn't raise that, he still got standing. You know? <laughs> but that's what you do for white folks in your court. All right? <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, I want the Greens in these states to say race in our party affiliation, that that these uh, presidential electors is being disfranchised based on race in our party affiliation, and the party affiliation mean that people who vote Democrat are gonna not be counted. Now in your state, you say race our party affiliation. All that race is is say that you know all the states are disfranchising blacks, right. blue or red. 
But if you if you say if you don't get it on pot affiliation, you get it on race. But on pot affiliation, the pot affiliation in your case means that we are disfranchising Republicans who underwent get at least twenty or thirty percent of the vote in New York. So that's the game that we apply this nation and let's see. Uh, we do have a black Republican in our peace group in Long Island. So there is a black Republican in New York. Do him, bro. Get him yourself. <laughs> Get him. They say, bro, you want to represent your people and also your party? Join us. Get him to John. <laughs> Look, let me be clear. Now, here's what the game is, folks. As I say, they're blue states and red. This is winner take all. And the winner take all, based on the 2000 election, uh, the Republicans got 108 uh, a total electors and the Democrats 10. Now, if you had the district system, look what it would have been. But if you break it down by district, these are districts run by Democrats. You can see they win some district in the southern states and the, in the Republican in the red or blue states are split. It's 87 and 72. <coughs> but you know what messes it up? It's this, the, the electors based on the Senate, the two senators. There are 15 states that are red and seven are blue. That means that 30 electors, you see, go to the red, just by basis of the fact of that undemocratic Senate system. See. You can't erase that. And so it's 117 to 86. So the district system applied over these winner take all. Don't let them trap you with this. See, this is what. Florida, you know, you hear about this initiative in California that the Republicans come up and say they want, they should have some kind of, uh, they call it proportional representation. It's actually the district system, <laughs> okay, because they know they win at least 22 districts in California. And that's what they're holding in their back pocket to have a referendum in if it looks like the Republicans may not lose. They're going to put in that referendum and ask for them to pass it. Now, actually, our position is green. You don't need a referendum. The 14th Amendment, second session, actually mandates proportional apportionment. If you have a proportional penalty, the only way you can avoid a proportional penalty is to have proportional representation. One, I, I don't know if you understand. One of the things I'm telling you is that actually when they take all is unconstitutional. Every, every way it applies. With respect to the... Then don't, don't, don't look surprised. You violated the first session before people living for a century. <laughs> you know, I don't want to make another century. You know, it took you a century to get the first session the 14th Amendment right, the Green's position. We don't want to work another century for you to get the second session of the 14th Amendment right. All right? And so what it is is the penalty is proportional. Let me show you how, how, how you know what they say. The second session would say that the legislators shall select. The president, uh, the electors, they don't have that really have the power. The power is in the citizen right. Under that law, it says that you will be reduced in proportion to that disfranchised population. Suppose the governor of California said, "I don't think I like the way these guys are going to vote, so nobody in my state can vote." Now you come to the second section. He's denied everybody the right to vote, right? That means then there's nobody left to represent California. So there's no way a system can abolish itself, as Abraham Lincoln said. That was his defense of why you couldn't secede from the Union. No government puts in place a system where it can abolish itself. And so the second section makes it clear, and that's taking it to the stream, that that power no longer exists in the states. And that's why, you remember, in the, in the veto message of the president at that time, say the states have his right, but they overrode that veto. But they're pretending that that right still exists in the states today because the legal profession is in denial. That's why you have, may have a problem dealing with law because liberal law, they're all in perpetuating this myth. But pro se, you can make this, uh, make the argument. Now, here's proportional, like I say, you can see that the Republicans uh, have advantage over the Democrats and both of uh, us winner take all system, a district system. But now let's go to a proportional apportionment. Look at the difference between the Democrat and the Republican. See, this is the argument we would be making. We say Obama, the Democrats, a proportional apportionment was a proper and exciting for you to determine your delegate process. And Obama, you wouldn't be. You know you would not be the nominee if you had winner take all 
in the Democratic primary. If it's good enough for your primary, why isn't it good enough for the general election? See, that's the dilemma and the contradiction that we can get them on. And so you can see that the difference would have only been round that all one electoral vote. So the Democrat will uh, uh, gain over the 13 uh, vote deficit if we enforce proportional apportionment of the presidential electors just in those states that have no law that specifies that the candidate wins the proper vote is called presidential electors. Now, some of you, if you sum this up, you will notice this is not 203. This is only considering the Democratic proportion and the Democratic Republic. You know where those others are? <laughs> See? That's why. Now, it may be you got, it's about eight electoral votes out there. <laughs> that may be enough to actually determine the election. Right. So if we move for this, we can then go out there and aggressively say, Vote green. Your vote won't be wasted. Right. But if you have a post and post and you say, bro, you vote for us, you can get a percentage of the, enough percentage of the electors so that you can determine, you can be kingmaker. Now I said something, it just brought to my mind before my solidity kicks in. I say it at the, election, uh, at the last thing, I mentioned that I, that's why I'm not for IRV. I'm not, let me clear, make clear, I'm for IRV in every circumstance except the Electoral College. Now why is that? Because I don't want us to lose our power the moment we get it. <laughs> right, right. Under, under, you see what I'm saying? At, if we had this in place, we're sitting, let's take the 2000 election. If the 2000 election was predicated on proportional apportionment of the presidential election, predicated on proper split, uh, Ralph Nader would have had 12 presidential electors. Now, the media would have been in the limit. <laughs> Nothing could have happened <laughs> until they heard what the Greens had to say. Right. You know, from November the 4th until <coughs> December the 12th at least. What are the Greens going to do with those 12 presidential electors? Yeah. Especially since they say it's Tweedledee D and Tweedledee D done between them anyway. <laughs> All right? Now, if you had instant runoff, they wouldn't worry because what? Run, we'll lose it. <laughs> we got it. They right. just run again. Right. Got it, so, uh, uh, IRV, everything else, but not the Electoral College. Because I'm a hypocrite that way. <laughs> 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 I'm not, you know, I ain't trying to be consistent. <laughs> I'm trying to be democratic <laughs> and right for our party. So, take it from a hypocrite and a plagiarist, <laughs> you know, that. Uh, uh, what I'll be asking for, and then I'm going to open it up for questions. And so what I'm charging, and you can contact me, my contact is on the pamphlets that I have you, is to look at www.electors.us on the civil suit on June, I'm filing, I'll be filing a template suit on June the 28th. That will be the July, century, July. July the 28th. That will be the century and two score anniversary of the passage of the adoption of the 14th Amendment to the Constitution. So I'm just doing that symbolically. I'm going to also be asking, and I'm hoping some of you will prevail. It will be wonderful if our presidential candidate filed with me in the suit. As representative of all of those presidential electors that are voting for minority poll candidates, in states where they receive a minority population, but they are not getting any electors predicated on their strength. I think it is very good. I think we should be out there in, in treating our presidential candidate to file a suit on behalf of all party presidential candidates that, in behalf of presidential electors that vote for our presidential candidate that are disfranchised just because they did not receive the majority vote in their state, but there is no winner take all statute. So I'm asking you as the as the malapportioned penalty electoral college enforcement task. <laughs> <laughs>
for you. <laughs> and the green malapportionment penalty enforcement electors. <laughs> to go out there and... Hell in a t-shirt, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can see, work on the t-shirt. Somebody want to work on the t-shirt, yeah. <laughs> but it's called MAP. That's what you call it, MAP. So what do you mean MAP? Malapportionment penalty. That is, the system is malapportioned because uh, penalty under the second section calls for the reduction in this state because the disfranchised Republicans who get 40% of the vote but don't get an electors. In this state, they disfranchise 30% of Democrats because they get a vote. But don't mention that, you know, we get 2% here, 2% there, that may total up. <laughs> don't mention that now. <laughs> you know, you, you, you're fighting for the rights of all parties, presidential electors. Right. And you know, and, and like most things that you do for the good of others, when you look underneath, there's something good for you too. <laughs> yes. Well, Asa, there's a lot of people, including myself, who feel that the Electoral College is part of the same tyranny that brought us the caucus system, which mm -hmm. is designed to take the vote away from the public. And so why shouldn't we just eliminate the, the uh, Electoral College in the first place and just have a straight public vote? Because you have to amend the Constitution. I'm giving you a technique that given that you stuck <laughs> with the founding fathers of the Electoral College. And, and, and let me tell you, okay, let me sit, submit this to you. It is going to work once. For instance, in 2000, suppose we had proposed, we had pushed this through, and we had proposed to the presidential electors. And the Greens are sitting there with 12 electors, and the damn thing can't be decided until we deal with us. I can guarantee you we don't have to do nothing. They will abolish the electoral college. Make sure that yeah. so, so you see, Third it's not together. Now, I'm telling you folks, it's only going to work once. <laughs> <laughs> but let's get out once in. <laughs> no other thing, no, no other technique that we apply is going to work. It ain't going to appeal to them. This will make it naked. He said, "Oh my God, is that what when uh, when they all can you know uh, do if we have to do in a proportion? Okay, let's get rid of this thing." So this is a one. One time glory event, folks, <laughs> for, for the next election. But it, this is as close as you can get to one man, one vote under the Constitution as it exists without a constitutional amendment. I agree with you. I ain't denying you that, man. But this is what we have to work with. And, and, and we really, the reason why I want to start in those states that have. Uh, uh, no winner take all stature because that gives you the strongest that we, it can't, there's nothing they can point to. Now let me tell you something at the at the hearing I might miss this at the hearings I say Congress this is on C-SPAN you can pick this up I said Congress I can tell you how you can win the next election without a recount and by the rule of law and you will see this I say there are 14 15 states with 47 presidential electors that voted for Kerry from anywhere from 20 to 49 percent. They are Democratic electors. All you have to do is call, there has no winner take all statute. All you have to do is call your own party president, and he interrupted me. He said, This is the most amazing proposition that I've ever heard. <laughs> and if true, will change the, the, the voting process in the United States of America. Wow, that's a hell of a state. I won't do it. And guess what? I never heard from him again. <laughs> <laughs> is he still in power? After yeah. Yeah. Now, the reason is, you know, among blacks sometimes we have that saying, more white than liberal. On that day, the black caucus proved to me that they were more Democrat than black. <laughs> <laughs> So the duopoly of the power of both parties took preeminence over protecting the citizen's right to vote. And that's bipartisan, <laughs> across race. They said that, okay, they say five minutes. They say that there, there is not unity in Congress. Brothers, I brought unity in Congress. <laughs> I, that day, I brought bipartisanship to Congress. 
He said, we may not love one another. We, not like, we don't like what the Republicans are doing to us in these states. But we don't want what he wants, <laughs> which is true democracy. We both will put up with the sham of sham democracy as long as we can ensure that we are the only game in town. Right, right. And so what we're going to do is call them to task and show up the naked hypocrisy of these parties by insisting on proportion of proportion that represent, I don't care, Republican or Democrat, the Greens will file Green presidential electors, I'm asking you to call a class action suit as presidential electors to represent all presidential electors, you represent all presidential electors who are disfranchised in states on the winner take all uh, uh, provisions where there is no winner take all statute. That's the game. That's what I'll be calling for. Is Congress a separate country? <laughs> <laughs> it is in our system, yeah. Hey, all right, thank you. Would you ask all the electors in that state to sign on to that class action suit? I would like, yeah, in the state. Oh, no. Democratic no, no, all the time. Well, if you can, do it. But if you can, I, 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 what I'm going to do is probably the party most progressive, all right? I'm saying at least start off with the president's electors to the Now, if you happen to know, like, some sense was in there and say, if you happen to know some, uh, uh, you say, look, we filed in this class action suit. Because you know you get actually you get more votes in your space than we do, you know. So if you want to sign on, yeah, bring them in. If you have green presidential electors, Democratic presidential, communist presidential electors, all saying that we get a percentage, people vote for us, and we should get a percentage, yes, I say reach out to them and bring them in. But I know we will do. It. See, they may not do it because their party officiaries may be calling them and say, hey, you don't want to do this, you know, because we want to keep the game between us. Now, I'm not sure our party officials may say it. So quite frankly, I'm telling you, you do it. You know, if you feel that this is, if you feel as I do, that this is made to democratize the process, I'm asking you to do it pro se, represent yourself. Represent, that's what you're doing. You say pro se, I represent myself. Even though it's a class action suit. But you say, and all people who are similarly situated as I am. That's what your suit is. I represent myself and all similarly situated a presidential electors, whatever be their party, that are being disfranchised in states by virtue of one take all provisions where there is no statute that the governor or the state official can point to and say that the candidate in this state is only the uh, award all the presidential electors. But there's a movement underway that's actually gone through almost 20% of the um, uh, states with electoral votes, and that's to, it's called national popular vote. And that is a pact that is on its way to passage. Massachusetts just passed it at one uh, level of the House last week, and others are about to. And that will profoundly change the way the Electoral College works in that the winner of the national popular vote will be the basis by which the electoral votes in the states will be awarded. If each state legislator is, it would have to pass that provision, uh, well, and then the pressure would be on other states. Yeah. And now let me tell you something. The fact of the matter <laughs> is, states don't have that authority under the second, second, and fourteenth amendment. They took away that authority because the southern states would not pass the 14th Amendment. I'm, I'm trying to tell you it is a myth that states have the, the authority over the electoral process. That's a states' right issue that's in denial that the 14th Amendment changed our system of federalism. That's the myth we live on. Because if they had that power, we wouldn't have a 14th Amendment. We wouldn't have a 13th Amendment. And as they took that power away from the states, and say and it, it cast what they call enforcement laws and all and gave it to the people. They say when the citizens' right to vote is denied or bridge, legislators shall be reduced. That what does that mean? You know what's right about that? That means that the power of the people is greater than the legislators. No the reconstruction. Yeah, reconstruction actually said that the power is in you and the legislators can't take it. My God, I can't find a nation on the earth. No. That is really destroyed that, that kind of power. 
So the weaken it, so what we're about is enforcing the power of the Reconstruction Economy. We are the new reconstruct the re reconstruction part. <laughs> 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 but, even, but even so, if enough states that control 270 electoral votes pass it, then the design of then the it path, is then it is then it's, then it's effectively bypassed. Yes. The electoral college is bypassed, and the winner of the national popular vote always gets that. And campaigns have to campaign everywhere. So why are they waiting to do that? We're going to file a class action suit, and this is green president, the greens. Map, you know, the Green Map Task Force to afford the Malibu and in all of these states. And so, you know where my contact, email me, say, I'm a, I'm a Green President, get your record somewhere, and I can give you a PDF file of what a, you know, a, a suit could be like for you in your particular state. All right? What you want, the fast, the closest you can get to a fair representation that's close as possible to one man, one vote, without amending the Constitution, is proportional apportionment of the presidential electors predicated on the popular split in the Electoral College. That's as close as we can get. <laughs>